Last week, I showed you the concept of optimistic UI. But while we can be optimistic for create, update or delete, we can for fetching dynamic data. That's why React 19 and the concept of async React brought suspense boundaries to us. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's totally fine. Just watch that video here. But in a nutshell, to avoid slow navigation, add suspense boundaries around the component that is doing a suspending thing to show some fallback UI while your data is loading. And this some UI is most of the time called a loading skeleton. So a skeleton of your UI, no data inside. It's just the skeleton. And guess what? They now got easier than ever with a nice and clean new DevTools option called the Suspense tab. But just give me a minute to explain you my journey of skeletons. And yes, I'm obsessed with light mode currently. I'm so sorry. So this code here shows a simple example of using skeletons. We have this fetching data component here. Let's look into it. And all it is doing is it is fetching something from JSON placeholder, the most laughed API, and then it reads the JSON from it. So we got some to-dos here, map over the to-dos, just looks like that. Now this fetching data component here is suspending. Why? Because it's using top level await. So if you're using top level await or the new use hook from React, you are suspending. So now we have this page here and we wrap this fetching data component with a suspense and then we can show a fallback UI which in this case is just a paragraph showing loading. So when I refresh this page I see loading for exactly three seconds and then I see the data of my page. But most of the time you don't want just a simple paragraph showing loading. You want something that is more of a skeleton, something that does look like your data. And what I did here is I researched for skeleton generators and there are a lot out there. The thing is pretty easy. You paste some HTML code and you get a skeleton out of there, which you then can paste into any component you want. That was fine for me when I just learned the concept, but at the end of the day, it was unreliable, it was buggy and most of the time it actually was ugly. So while these generators are a quick solution, I wouldn't suggest them to you. So I shifted my method. Instead of doing the whole thing automatically, I did it manually. So you're taking your fetching data component, take the HTML or JSX or whatever you want to call it and create a new component that you will call, for example, a to do skeleton. Yeah, my AI is already doing that for me. You paste the code and then you eliminate all the logic inside. So we have no to do's here. So we take just a random array with length 10. We remove that whole block and use, for example, the skeleton component of Shetzian here. So we give that a key and a random height of 10 and that's it. Now, instead of this P loading, we would actually use this to do skeleton and voila, if we refresh the page, we now see a skeleton. Nice, but you already see a problem. My actual to-dos are a little bit more bigger than the to-dos that I see in my loading skeleton. This leads to a CLS, a cumulative layout shift, where my layout is actually shifting at the moment where the real data comes in. So what I would do now is to go in here and try around. So I would go with H12, for example, and then let me refresh and we see mm, that's still not working. So I'm going forth and back and just trying to find the right solution. Ugh, that honestly sucks. And the second problem this. Imagine inside of your app you have multiple suspense boundaries. So not just one big suspense, you have little suspenses everywhere. Like for example with this component where we have this fetching data component advanced which already suspends but then inside of it we have another suspense because the header is maybe fetching your user and this also suspends. So you want multiple loading skeletons. You can't individually see them with the current approach by just checking it in the browser. That's all just a mess. But actually not anymore. Now we have this new developer tools tab. So you click inspect and then you go to suspense. Maybe you don't see that. There could be a couple of reasons why you don't. For example, I'm using Next.js here. It is already baked in into Next.js. If you don't use Next.js, then just be aware that you use the newest version of the React developer tools. I think it's version seven. And if you still don't see it, try a canary version of react then you have to see it so you open your application in localhost and then you are faced with this clean your eye here so we see our page the green thing is the suspended area not the skeleton just the area where the skeleton lives and now here on the bottom we can do an awesome thing we could just click play and we see the whole suspense flow but what's even better now is we can pause at a specific point so we can say hey show me the initial paint and i just have this screen here. So I don't need to write a wait new promise every time I want to work on my skeletons. I now have this 
browser tab here which shows me my skeletons. So problem one is already solved so you can have your code editor on the left side and the suspense tab on the right side and see your life changes. So I'm going into my fetching data component using h18 for example. See, ah, okay that looks way better. Now let's toggle around here and see if it fits. So problem one is solved. And problem two, what about more than one suspense boundary? That's actually also solved. So if we now have this fetching data component advanced here with this avatar here on the top, we see there are now three tabs here at the bottom and we have two green fields here, which shows that we have two suspense boundaries. So now we can go to step one, which is the initial pane where we just see loading skeletons. So the loading skeletons of the to-do and the most top here is the one from the header. Now the to-do list, which is ready and the last one which is now the avatar and that just solved problem two but actually we can even go beyond we can click this icon here show inspected element and actually see what took the time so was it the react server component stream which actual component was it and what is the fallback and just some additional information so working with suspense boundaries really just got an upgrade. So if you're curious about new topics around React or Next.js, you are totally right on this channel. Or you should actually check out the Next.js weekly newsletter, which I use for half of my topics. It's just an honest recommendation here. So if you don't want to miss any future content, follow this channel. It's not a big deal. You don't get spammed, but it helps me a lot. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day. Bye bye.